What's up guys, welcome back. This is the uh, next video of uh, Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. And uh, we're going to start off by um, pretty much uh, getting to enter the town this time. Should be pretty interesting. The last video I pretty much uh, just showed off, um, you know, just the introduction and stuff. And a couple of tutorials and we're going to be doing a little bit, a couple more tutorials in this video as well. And um, I'm actually going to be switching over to my hero mode, so you'll be able to see, uh, you know, the different items that carry over and whatnot. So, let's get started here. Now, I'm not exactly sure, entirely sure if I'm going to... Um, you know, um, record this entire playthrough with commentary. I'm, I haven't decided yet. And, you know, parts of the videos might be commentary, parts of them might not be. Um, you know, generally what I like to do is I like to create instructional, um, you know, guides and videos and stuff like that. But sometimes, it, you know, if I'm in the mood for commentary, I'll do commentary. If not, then, you know, I'll just record the footage and, you know, write down descriptions and stuff in the comment boxes below on YouTube. So this video is going to be called The Case of the Missing Loftwing. This is basically um, has to do with um, our Loftwing missing. I don't want to give any spoilers, but we'll see. If that's coming up. So, you know, in our last video, um, basically we uh, spoke to Zelda and we found out that the loft wing has been taken and it is now uh, missing somewhere and is trapped. So this mission is to find um, Link's loft wing. I always love the Zelda tunes. They always, uh, you know, are upbeat and pretty cool. Nice to listen to. Good music and stuff. And this is where I, you know, check the covers and there's nothing there right now, but that's because I already got the blue ruby. Alright, let's talk to Fledge here. So everyone's pretty much just giving me advice, information about my loft wing being missing, so. So there, he's telling me to go to the plaza. And that's generally where we're going to be going next, that's into town. We're not going to be, um, you know, searching the entire area. We're just mainly going to be focused on trying to find the loft wing. And in the next video, I'm going to be doing a little bit more exploration. Exploring and stuff. And most of these doors are still locked, you can't access them yet until later. <coughs> In this video you'll also get to see me um, finally get the sword and, the, and actually do a little bit of battling too towards the end, so it'll be pretty, a little more interesting than the last video. <laughs> Finally get to actually, uh, get in, you know, involved in the combat and stuff. And on hero mode as well, so. Oh, 
All the damn doors are locked. The only one that's open is Headmaster Giaporo's office. And he's not there. Oh yeah, that's right. He's up there at the top of the goddess statue with Zelda. almost forgot about that. Alright, so let's get out of here. <laughs> Enough of the academy for a while. Alright, we're finally outside. Alright, let's see. Let's talk to this guy right here, see what he says. Uh, my bird. Okay, that was much help. Thank you very much. Bruce. In town somewhere, okay. So we got a lead on Bruce. And you'll find out that he's actually the culprit behind uh, the um, my loft wings being uh, kidnapped. And that's the sparring hall. We'll be going here actually uh, pretty soon. That's where you start to learn how to uh, use your weapons and stuff when you first when you get your first uh, practice sword. So now we're finally going down into town. Okay, and we see this little boy right here actually rolling himself into this tree. This is actually kind of another tutorial that you can um, get to unlock. Um, what you have to do is just roll into it, you know, by uh, dashing and then ro and then uh, um, shaking the nun nunchuck. And that's how you roll. You, you have to do that a lot, you know, in the game to uh, roll and to smash into things. So, you know, like rubies and lots of items drop from trees and whatnot. It's pretty interesting. Pretty, you know. And Oh, and this is actually a bug right here that you see. A sky stag beetle. You can't actually capture bugs yet until you get the bug net. But uh, when, once you get the bug net, then you can start capturing bugs. It's a mini game on Skyward Sword. And you'll see in my, um, when I switch over to my hero mode playthrough, um, you'll see where I have all the bugs that I've captured before. Because they carry over, which is kind of cool. And they're definitely a useful item because they're used for, um, you know, upgrading a lot of your equipment and stuff like that, so. Alright, so let's go in here. Let's see what's in here, huh? Nothing. I'm gonna break these pots first. A couple of rubies. Now you notice these hearts actually growing there. In hero mode, you actually will not find hearts growing like that. So you have to be really careful. Especially in the dungeons and stuff. You just won't see hearts laying out in the open. So that guy just basically tells us about the wing ceremony, which is a, an event that's going to be happening once I find my loft wing. Alright, let's go outside and let's uh, head towards uh, Groose now and his cronies. 
They're actually right over here in the plaza area. This uh, windmill thing actually takes place much, much later in the game. It's actually uh, part of a puzzle in the game. You won't be seeing that for quite a very long time. Alright, so here we go. Here's a cutscene coming up. I love this cutscene too, it's funny. You, you get to see more of the personality of uh, Zelda and how she is. She's so much different in this game than other games. And there's Groose. Yeah, right. I'm gonna smoke you, fool. Oh, this is funny. You can get some alone time with Zelda. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> I just might. I just might grow wings. <laughs> so apparently Link and Zelda have been like childhood friends in this game. So they go like way back as childhood friends. So I think I find that kind of interesting as a backdrop for their uh, character development. And there she is. I love this stern attitude she has. It's just like it's, it's hilarious. Here she comes. You better watch it. Goose is like scared shitless. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his face. Suppose what? You can only guess what's going through his mind right now. And dirty thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the introduction to those idiots actually Groose is actually a, um, what I find interesting about this is like a lot of Zelda games when they introduce these side characters you know you never really um, you never really play a significant role in the story but you'll find that Groose is actually one of the main characters in this um, game and he actually um, plays some pretty interesting roles throughout the um, story I found that pretty interesting. Even though he seems like a nobody right now, he, he really actually plays pretty important. Uh, he's he's an important part of the plot later on. So now Zelda's going after him. Or Zelda's actually going after her to try to fight the Lock Wing. Alright, so now I gain control again, and now I'm off. 
I think first what I'm going to do is I'm going to see, head back to the academy. See, I hate, the only thing I really hate about this game is this damn stamina gauge. It becomes really a nuisance later on when you're trying to complete a lot of puzzles and stuff like that. It, it becomes really difficult. Okay, so here's where we're going now. We're going to talk to Pippet. And this is where we're going to get to enter the spar sparring hall. Fledge is kind of like a wimp. He gets punked, apparently. So whenever you hear that like chime that indicates that you um, you know activated some certain uh, you know location on the map and stuff like that or like a quest or objective or anything like something like that like for example this right now shows the map and there's like a little X that's where we have to go next that's actually where the um, waterfall cave is and that's where the loft wing where you'll find your missing loft wing. Can't help being such a coward. I'll just grow a friggin' backbone. Jesus. Actually, you'll find later on there's a quest um in the game that's pretty cool about him. He actually uh, turns from a coward into like a an old ruffian, strong guy, working out all the time and everything. It's kind of cool. So okay, now we're going to the sparring hall. This part's gonna be a little bit fun. I'm seriously tired of walking around without no weapons. Finally we get a get a weapon right here. So this is where you learn all of the basic um you know sword or basic fundamentals of you know attacking and stuff like that. It's it's quite interesting really. I mean with the Wii Motion Plus controls, I mean, you can literally um, twist your arm and the sword will actually twist and everything, or I mean, it'll turn. And all, in every way you move your arm, the sword will move, so it's really cool. And there we go, we got the practice sword. And that won't last long, that's basically just for the very beginning of the game. <laughs> There we go. See how I, I, I can move my... You actually can't see my uh, Wii Remote, but I can move my Wii Remote around and just uh, totally go to town, you know. It's pretty awesome. I played, you know, a few Wii games before with the Wii Remote, and a lot of them were res unresponsive. This game, surprisingly, actually, I actually had pretty f much fun with because um, the Wii Remote Motion Plus controls actually worked pretty well with it. So this is where it teaches you how to do all these different slashes. Mm. And that's what all these logs are all set up for, for you to learn how to uh, Z-target and learn how to fight. And you gotta get pretty good at this if you're gonna fight a lot of enemies and stuff. Otherwise, they'll just destroy you, especially in hero mode where they take like lots more uh, damage to take down, and they're uh, and you take them, you know a lot more damage. <laughs> like that one right there is a vertical slash, or actually that's the horizontal slash, and that's the vertical slash. And this is the um, diagonal, upper diagonal slash, or whatever, and then the lower diagonal slash. <laughs> 
And then this is the jab, where you jab it. I actually missed right there. Yeah, that's how you do that. Those are the basic attacks. Pretty easy. Yes, I am. And so for the spin attack, you basically have to um, um, jiggle, like jiggle your Wii remote and your nunchuck at the same time. It's kind of, it's pretty cool. And that does the spin attack in this game. This is actually, the, you know, the first time I've actually really played a Wii game, you know, with the Wii Motion Plus controls. I played a few other Wii games, like, um, uh, what's it called? Um, I can't remember the name of it right now, but, uh, I played some other Wii games. More like, like different RPGs and stuff like that, that, where I didn't really have to use the Wii Motion Plus controls as much. So this is the kind of first game that I really, really had to use the Wii Motion Plus controls, which is pretty cool. And that's teaching you how to do the um, the final attack or whatever. And that's pretty much it for the tutorials, or the Fatal Blow is what it's called. And then when you later on when you get a shield, um, they teach you how to use this shield. And that's with the log with the string over there, or with the rope, swinging. So that's it for this, let's go. Finally got a weapon in hand. Finally time to get started fighting some enemies, hopefully, pretty soon. <laughs> Just let me leave already, Jesus. Can't take swords out of the sparring hall. Oh yeah, that's right. But he's gonna, you know, give me a um, an exception because my loft wing is missing. <clears throat> oh, I sure will. I'll be chopping off some heads. <laughs> All the time. I'm gonna start with Fledge over here. <laughs> yeah, bird statue, that's how you say it. We already know about that. Alright, Fledge. You think I'll make any time link? I'm such a wimp. Oh, jeez. I will have to slice you into a million different pieces. See all those different combos I'm doing? I'm, I, they actually didn't teach those in the... Um, I can't. I just wore myself out. Okay, so this is actually the um, Sheikha Stone. This records all of your events in the game and like everything that you've um, seen. Now, this dialogue right here actually, because I noticed when I went back to Hero Mode, this dialogue actually changes. And I won't be showing that in this video, but it does change in Hero Mode. It'll say, I noticed that you have recovered, that you've um, visited all these areas, and I noticed that you completed the game in Hero Mode. So I'm gonna gain, gain, give you access to all the hints. Right now, of course, I'm not in hero mode, so that he's not going to give me access to any hints yet. But if I'm playing this in hero mode, you'll see where uh, I can actually go back to the statue and see all of the hints and, you know, videos and, or whatever, you know, information that he gives me will all be recorded on that statue from the beginning of the game. Alright, so now we're going in town. And we're gonna go heading towards that uh, waterfall place. And I'm gonna save right here. 
And this is where I'm going to switch the game to hero mode. So be prepared for that. You see a little cut. And here we are. You notice I have 40 rubies. <laughs> a little less than I did on my other game. Same hearts and everything, but this is hero mode. And I'll show you by opening up my menu. Uh, that's actually the map. But uh, the menu. And you'll see that I, I've actually used almost all of my damn bugs. and I'm kind of um, upset that I used all of my items, but <laughs> I had to use a whole bunch of them to create like some of the best stuff. So, you know, I should have farmed for a bunch of these before I came to Hero Mode because I'll need a lot of this. If, you know, the more of these collectibles you have at the beginning of the game, it's just going to make your adventure so much more easier because you'll be able to upgrade your equipment, you know, a lot quicker and get those guardian potions and all kinds of stuff so makes things a lot easier I kind of regret that I uh, used up all my uh, materials and stuff but I can always grind you know for them and stuff some of the bugs though are hard to find though that some of those you know are rare and only found in certain areas that you can't access until much later in the game so that can kind of prove somewhat of a challenging task you know um, moving through the um, adventure so here's where we gotta go, is we gotta go towards the waterfall area. <clears throat> okay, let's head to the waterfall area now. And there's like these stepping stones you have to cross. Yeah, it's right over here. This is where we get our first chance to fight. This is another um, statue that won't take place until like a very long time in the game. There's something that you actually have to do with this statue, but it's like almost at the not at the end of the game, but very close to the end of the game. So. Anyways, we gotta go up this path right here. And you see how you can chop down trees and stuff, that's pretty cool. And you know, wherever my sword is actually being handled is actually where my arm is. So like if my sword is to the left, I'm holding my arm to the left. I just find that really cool, you know, about the whole thing is, you know, you can just totally control the movement of your weapon based on, you know, the angle of your wrist and your arm and how you're moving it and stuff like that. So here we are, Waterfall Cave. This is like, sort of like a tutorial dungeon. There's only like two enemies in here that you have to fight. And the first ones are the uh, infamous keys <laughs> that we see in a lot of Zelda games. And then the other one is a jelly blob. And you can actually get um, items from these guys too. Um, materials. And you will also notice that these bats actually take two hits to kill. That's actually um, in hero mode only. Normally they only take one hit to, to kill. But since I'm in hero mode, everything is going to take a lot more attacks. You know, and you'll later on you'll see enemies that literally took 20 strikes just to take down. And here it's going to be like 40. On hero mode, it's going to be like 40 strikes. So it's like double. Everything has double the amount of um, health. And then, of course, you take double the amount of damage, too, so you got to be very careful not to get hit. And normally, I think the, when these guys hit you, they take like a quarter heart away, the keys do. And um, in hero mode, I think they take like a half a heart away or something like that. But I'm not going to let myself get hit, so... Oh, if I died here, man, I would no way be ready for here. I'm gonna when I get into the actual dungeons, where it gets uh, challenging. I really do love the fighting in this game, though. It's really awesome. 
So up here is a chest we can get. Yeah, it's a red ruby. And you can see there's a bug right there too that I can't capture because I don't have the bug net, but... You'll see a lot of those throughout the game. And there we go, I got my first uh, materials, a jelly blob from these guys. They drop them actually pretty uh, commonly, so... And you can see I have three of them now because it's uh, added on to my um, collectibles that I gained from my previous game. And there's the other material. I just got two. And that's the monster claw for, from the keys. What I kind of wish is that money carried over. That would be nice. I had like thousands and thousands of rubies on my last game. And unfortunately, money doesn't carry over, which kind of sucks. Yeah. Because you have to farm for, you know, rubies. So yeah, there's a little hole in right over here. You can see um, red rubies. You can get um, two red rubies right here. Brings you all the way to 107 rubies. Alright, so let's exit this place. I right, should kill this guy first. Alright, now we're back outside on the other end. Okay, I'm gonna save. And there she is. Alright, so here we go. And it's really not that far down here, it's just right down here. And there he is. Boarded up with uh, boards. Surprisingly, I actually can't cut these boards. You have to actually cut the ropes that hold them. Practice sword apparently is not strong enough to cut boards. I find that ironic because, you know, anything with a blade is going to be able to cut wood, you know, I just, uh, whatever. Move these barrels out of the way. So let's cut these ropes. This kind of, I guess, is another tutorial thing. It kind of teaches you how to, you know, vertically slash and horizontal slash the ropes. Because you'll have to be doing that a lot on enemies. And finally we got our bird back. There's my loft wing. And he definitely likes me. Link's all excited.
Oh yeah, this is when she starts talking about the surface world. Which is, you know, the, pretty much like the main world of the game. That we'll be entering pretty soon after we get past all of these events in uh, Skyloft. And essentially down there is actually where Hyrule was constructed and everything. If you look, you know, in the history. This is actually before Hyrule was um, um, built. Or before Hyrule Field came into play. They just referred to it as like the surface world, basically. And, you know, the Temple of Time and everything. You'll see a lot of that um, being displayed in this game. But, you know, it has different names and stuff. Alright, so this next part is where you uh, learn the tutorial for uh, controlling your loft wing. And this is another part that I really liked about the game, uh, where it uses the Wii Motion Plus controls, where you can uh, fly your bird. And you have to do this a lot in the game to get around, you know, from place to place. Because you'll find out later on there's a big, huge map where you have to, like, you can fly around in the sky and go from Skyloft to a different area. And, like, there's a whole bunch of different areas in the sky that you can uh, land on and stuff. So here we are, flying with Zelda. And I'm just getting the use of the controls here. Of course, I already know how to play the game, because I've already played it before, but it's fun. Tilt the Wii roll to the left or right, pretty basic. And so basically to um, speed up, to actually see how he uh, um, gets, when he gets too low, to, to too low elevation, like his, his wings will start flapping. That indicates that you want to kind of, you know, um, shake the, you know, the, the Wii remote so you can actually fly upwards. You can shake it like to a downward position or like, you know, snap your wrist like that to a downward position and then he'll uh, flap his wings like I'm doing right now, like right there. See how the ele I'm, go I'm going to high elevation, then you can like point it downwards and he'll dive. And you can also push the A button to um, use the boost. There's like three wing boosts there. And then you go faster. And that's it for that tutorial. So, anyways, guys, that's it. I'm gonna. That's all I'm gonna do for this video right now. Um, I'm gonna. There's actually a save point coming up, so I'm gonna actually quit. In our next video, we're going to focus on the wing ceremony, so that'll be interesting to see. We'll have uh, to race uh, Goof Groose, so hope you look forward to it. And I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to do commentary videos on all these videos, but we'll talk about that later. So see you guys later. Bye-bye.